Hello, everybody. Howdy. We're here with another episode of IGN Plays Classics. Who are you? I'm Caleb. Who am I? It says right there. It says right there? Right down there? Is that what's happening? Yeah. That's kind of exciting. All right. Well, there we go. So what are we playing today, Jared? We are playing Streets of Rage 2 for... Bam! Genesis. Sega! That's right. Uh, so yeah, this Street is the original Rage. game. Yep. Original cartridge. 1992. So uh, Streets of Rage, one of those games where you walk to the right and punch things. And, you want to uh, show the walking and the punching? And the walking and the punching. Yeah, and it's All a right. wonderful video game. I really enjoy Streets of Rage. Let's get into it. Why do you um, like the Streets of Rage, Caleb? Why do I like Streets of Rage? Well, yeah. if you can see right here on the title screen, mm -hmm. the thing that gets me... Music by Yuzo Kashiro. Yeah, and uh, Yuzo Kashiro, uh, famous for all kinds of video game music. My favorite being Ye Old Act Razor, uh, the fine SNES uh, classic. What about you? Which favorite uh, Yuzo Kashiro music? Uh, you know, honestly, I'm obsessed with the Streets of Rage 2 soundtrack, right. which is a big part of why we're playing. Oh, uh, you're playing Blaze. I'm okay. playing Blaze. Okay, you're playing Blaze. So you're playing my girl here, so I'll be I'll be Max. So one thing that's awesome that I noticed yeah. earlier, this game is from 92, right? Uh-huh. Already you're seeing more diversity in character options than like 95% of games today. That's a very good point. This is a diverse cast compared to what you were used to from the period. So, all right, we got to, I'm going to take Skate. Cool. So Great. Blaze, we got it. Young Lady and Skate. Here we go. So back on the Yuzo Kashiro thing, what's, I mean... This music is iconic. This music is yeah. incredible. And this music is probably only something that you get on Genesis, right? Yeah. And, and well, okay, so the Sega Genesis is a really weird system when it comes to music. It used the Z80, uh, which is actually a central processing unit for its sound chip. And that produces this really weird kind of funny. Oh, oh, what, what, what is this? Did Appar you just throw me? Apparently, I can throw you. Uh, okay, apparently, you can. Are, are you going to be that way? No. Okay, I'm going to pick up the money, which doesn't really do anything. But I'm Keep telling me about the Genesis sound chip. Okay, here. so the Genesis sound chip is a Z80, which is normally used as a CPU and 8-bit machines, but was repurposed as a sound chip in the Genesis, which, and it produces this kind of weird tinny vibe, which really only Sega was able to get their heads around and make great music out of. Uh, uh, Konami as well, I guess. But uh, most Sega Genesis games sound kind of kind of funny, like they're, they're recorded in a big aluminum can. Uh, but but Yuzo Kashiro squeezed all kinds of great like techno riffs out of this thing. Yeah, and what's amazing is for I mean games like this, he was actually composing on a PC88, right? Um, okay. On, a, on an old, even older machine. Yeah. With uh, a code system that he created himself. He was basically mm -hmm. programming in a language that he wrote on well, outdated hardware. Well, Yuzo Kashiro is kind of a uh, kind of a, a chip chip tune um, purist. I mean, he really likes working with the, the inner workings of the hardware. So that's why he had his kind of weird custom rig for this. And a lot of the other uh, stuff he did reflects that sort of purity. Uh, but because of that, he was able to squeeze every last inch of performance out of the sound equipment that he used. So, you know, the SNES, uh, which was a contemporary of this, had an amazing sound chip produced by Sony. Uh, Genesis games, by and large, okay, What? What? why do I keep, keep holding me you? up? See, you're grabbing okay. me now. Okay, yeah, and I'm sitting here with no life. So Genesis games by and large had a much harder time with sound but if Kashiro got his fingers on it things suddenly uh, suddenly came out a whole lot better and what's also awesome about this right is 1992 I mean this sits very very the music's very contemporary right yep. so Kashiro was a club kid in Tokyo in right. the 90s right going to like yellow and other main Tokyo clubs listening to techno Tokyo and underground when he made this right. soundtrack and the soundtrack for the first streets of rage the the Techno sound in video games didn't really exist. Mm -hmm. Not really. No, you didn't. Uh, you know, uh, other than um, you had some funny stuff. You know, you had the beginning of Skate or Die too, where the guys like Skate or, or Die, die. <laughs> Skate or Die, 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 Die. But that's not really techno. He's just trying to. Okay, I'm gonna. Yeah. So Kushiro is still working today. Um, there's actually an awesome documentary recently. That, oh yeah, the guy that, still does amazing stuff. That Red Bull put together, kind of about the history. If you're interested, um, dig it in the cards. Definitely check that out. So but let's uh, apart from him. Yeah, apart from him, what's to love here? Well, first, the jump kick. The ultimate move in every brawling game ever, the jump kick. If you don't know what to do in a side scrolling brawler, activate your jump kick because that'll kill most enemies in just about all of these. Okay, I'm grabbing you again and punching you in the head. Let's see, that wasn't very nice. No, no, it wasn't. But see, I'm doing it to this guy from behind. Now, that's uh, that's really my favorite thing about skate is his ability to do that. Hey, look, I'm skate. I can skate or die. It's kind of <laughs> awesome. Oh, he just, that guy just picked me up and threw me. So, uh, yeah, uh, simple two-player cooperative action, big dumb game, not particularly difficult, but that's, you know, you don't want two-player co-op games like this to be too difficult. Yeah, I mean, uh, Final Fight, which is, you know, kind of Capcom's version of this, yeah. that game I find is way more difficult. It is. Uh, it's more of a quarter muncher. Okay, I didn't... Wow, I'm just going to grab you all day. I, I, I'm not doing that on purpose. I swear, if I get near you, I just automatically grab you if I'm behind you. Little kid so, in rollerblades yeah. grabbing the lady with a knife. Yeah, kind of amazing. So uh, th this is what the 90s were like, kids. Uh, if you weren't there... Uh-oh. Boss. 
Uh, not really boss, more of a mini boss suit. But. He's still a pain. Yeah, he is. Yeah. This reminds me of the uh, the first boss in the, Why? In no. the Ninja Turtles okay. arcade game. Yeah, seriously, you just need to beat me up for punching you in the head too much. Yeah, he's kind of kind of got that vibe too. So, grab the knife, stay out of his punch range, get to him from behind. But speaking of final fight, oh, I got in the way of your knife. This there. was sort of developed in response to that, right? Oh, yeah, I, and it's also got this. Uh, it's got a vibe to it. It's designed to be more Sega. -y. You know, Capcom games uh, tend to have larger characters, maybe be a little more uh, kind of clunky. This is quick, fast action, pick up and play. Not particularly difficult. My special move is break dancing. I like to point <laughs> that out. Uh, you know, I was just watching Dirty Vegas Days Gone By video the other day. It was a great music video. Did you know that one, Caleb? It really was. Yeah, this is the guy guy breakdancing to bring the ghost Sorry, of his dead girlfriend you. back. Oh, did I just kill you? Yeah, you just killed me. That's all right. Yeah, it happens. I'm, Death happens. I'm, I'm a good friend. I stand right here and punch the edge of the screen because that's, well, that's, that's not very under Oh, there we go. Get up on top of his head. This guy's about dead. But yeah, so Capcom and Sega were sort of the, you know, uh, Japanese arcade powerhouses of the time. Absolutely, yeah. Um, and whereas... The home version of Final Fight only came to the Super Nintendo. Uh -huh. Sega didn't really have an answer to that. And yeah. this is, you know, right in that the middle of that Sega does what Nintendo don't craze, you know, the, the 90s console wars. Uh -huh. And so I think that's why yep. they created Streets of Rage, was to have a, a competitor to Final Fight. And on forget, forget competitor. What they had was a superior game. Final well, Fight Arcade well, is a wonderful game, but Final Fight for the, uh, for the SNES is hot trash. Well, and so is the first Streets of Rage. Yeah. If but, you don't remember. But Streets of Rage 2, so lovely. So Whereas Final fun. Fight 2, which never came out on the Super Nintendo, but did come out in arcades, apparently yeah. was basically just a rehash of Final Fight with yeah. you know, some new characters. Well, again, the Final Fight arcade game's fun. I mean, isn't it the one that has the guy, uh, guy in the wheelchair and the crossbow at the end? What? I believe that's Final Fight. Isn't that Final Fight? Isn't that Bloodborne? You can play Bloodborne. No, I think... I, oh, no, that happens too. Oh, okay. Now you threw me. Okay, we're just going <laughs> to grab each other. These two should kiss. So this yeah. isn't a system like Double Dragon where if I hit you, I get your power, right? No, no, nothing. I don't think so. I mean, I've never really, you know, it's been too long. But, what was uh, your favorite brawler? My favorite brawler of all time? Yeah. Uh, I'm awfully fond of Scott Pilgrim vs. The World. Ooh, very good. Uh, which is really good. I'm also, I enjoy Castle Crashers quite a bit. Um, played a lot of Double Dragon 2 on Double the Double Dragon NES. 2. That what was, about that's you? what I was going to get with, was Double yeah. Dragon 2. Yeah, Double Dragon, Double Dragon 2 illustrated, uh, again, that thing where you want these games to be easy because you're always playing with a friend. In this case, that friend would be me, who's not any good. Um, you know, the, the one the one that's constantly losing. Well, that's because and, I keep kicking you. Oh, is that what it is? I thought it was because I kept grabbing you from behind. And, yeah, but trying. Double Dragon 2, what I find interesting is that it wasn't just a walk from left to right and punch everything. Uh -huh. Right, Double Dragon had a little bit of platforming. You occasionally well. walk from right to left. There is that. Uh, but no, there was platforming. Actually, quite a bit in Double Dragon 2. And you know, the neat attack to the right, attack to the left control system. But there were a lot of neat things they did with Brawlers. You think about Double Dragon 1 for NES, which has a lot of problems. But the fact that they tried to add an experience point system because they couldn't figure out how to pull off real two-player on it. Uh, they were still getting their heads around it. So they're like, what do we do? I don't know. We'll add an experience move-adding system to it. And that's, you know, I like that kind of creativity, even if it didn't work out. Really, kids, you should just stop playing that game around the time a Bobo pops out of that wall in level three. <laughs> yeah, right. It, it's, it's not much fun after that. Um, I mean, if you want to make it a machine gun willy, and of course, you know, fighting your own brother, that's pretty cool. But, uh, uh, oh, there we go, fighting these guys here. Oh, they're great brawlers. There's quite a few. There's some There's some bad brawlers out there, too, some terrible brawlers. Uh, what happened to brawlers, Jerry? Uh, well, the problem with brawlers is that they're not a lot of fun unless you've got friends standing around with you. I, I think that's what makes a brawler enjoyable. Uh, you can play Castle Crashers online with your friends, but it's just not the same unless somebody's right there and you can go, go get that guy, or sit here and talk like we are. And so when arcades died, brawlers had a really hard time getting a foothold in, in people's consciousness, I think. I mean, there were console-exclusive brawlers like Battletoads, but the ones that people oh, really got... Oh, and the bouncer. Got, what's that? Sorry, the bouncer. The bouncer. Oh, okay. One, yeah. one, one that we could all forget. Yeah, I mean, we occasionally get... And there's Castle Crashers, uh, but or and Scott Pilgrim, which were both last generation. But... Um, these games are, are not things that, without without a room full of folks, it's just harder to enjoy a brawler because it's mostly about the social aspects. By the way, you're talking about great brawlers. Um, a, a good illustration of that factor, the one, you know, when they went to the six-player brawlers, like X-Men, you know, then you have oh, that. Oh, those were incredible and, yeah. in the arcade, absolutely. Because again, you just got a bunch of people around. You. Yep. Uh, yeah, okay. Of course, we haven't talked about TMNT or Turtles in Time, both of which are sublime uh, and contemporary. Once again, they do still happen. Dragon's Crown. Uh, right, yeah. Wonderful yeah, brawlers around, absolutely. which is you know, it, which is more than than liberally draws from Dungeons and Dragons, Shadow of Mysteria, and, more of and, an and, RPG, yeah, the whole Chronicles. Too, yeah. yeah, and those oh, those are great. 
Uh, those, those are available have much on, more depth than this as well. They do. They're available on Steam too, and I really enjoy them. Uh, you can buy them as a two pack. The second game of the of the two is is the one you want to play. Yeah, that's positively fun with friends online even now. But yeah, I think that's what happened. What about you, Caleb? Uh, when it when it comes to brawlers, uh, what do you think killed them? I think. I mean, I think you pretty much nailed it. I think it comes down to the. I mean, they're a simplistic experience, right? Yeah. And that there's only so much you can do as far as challenge and replayability is concerned. Oh, I am so without sorry. Without just I making you in the face. You know, without just being cheap. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I think that, you know, the couple attempts that we did see for modernizing the brawler, um, what was that 3D game on the PS1? Was it Fighting Force? Is that, was that what it was called? I don't know which one you're thinking about, the, so I'm not sure. Uh, it was developed by Core. Oh, guys, I don't Tomb remember Raider. what that thing was called. Anyway, I, so I, I mean, never got into There have been some attempts, right, at yeah. kind of modernizing the brawler formula. Yeah. But that really? worked to some success. But I think, honestly, the... To me, what kind of took over for the brawler, at least from a single-player perspective, is I think character action games actually pull a lot from side-scrolling brawlers. Oh, how so? Um, I, I think that that concept of um, the gameplay experience is more about clearing out enemies. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not about progressing through a level in so much as it's about progressing through a series of battles. I still miss that social aspect, though, just having the Absolutely. people there to... To, to screw and again kind of like we're doing you know i enjoy the brawlers where you can't hit each other but i also occasionally enjoy the ones where you can and it's fun just to be able to move from cooperation to com competition at any particular moment you know if i do just want to you know walk up behind you and be a jerk and, and, and what's so funny yeah. about that too is there's no incentive no except being a jerk and again it's that so people knew it it's just fun to screw with your friends just walk and, up behind you and just punch in the yeah, head yeah exactly just fun to do <laughs> like that you know and then but you died because you deserve to die uh for that not not for any other reasons. Oh, by the way, I would be remiss. You keep talking about great brawlers. While I'm punching in the head uh, and grabbing that gold, uh, I, we should also talk for a second about River City Ransom. Oh, because, God, what a classic. Uh, yeah. When I found out that River City Ransom didn't run at full speed when you played two-player on the uh, on the 3DS version, I, I cried a little. River City Ransom, now that's one that we should revisit for an IGN Plays Classics. Yeah, thing. yeah, I think that'd be a good one. We probably ought to just, because I think it's on a Wii Virtual Console, isn't it? I'm not as positive. I think so. Yeah, it is, because I've, I've played it. It's, let's it's track down the cart. That's the fun way to do oh, these. Yeah, I agree. So, yeah, I mean, the whole point of IGN Plays Classics, right, is both to educate you, the viewer, about games that you might have missed. It's also to take that little nostalgic trip down memory lane. Yeah. But also we want to show games as close to the way that we played them as possible. Yep. Which is sometimes kind of hard to do in this age of yep. uh, digital television and uh, uh, HDMI connectors. Yep. But we've, we found some neat tricks to get around that. And do so the there we were actually some comments on our last Retro Let's Play for Ninja Gaiden about the fact that we're using a Retron. Yeah. Um, ideally, I would like to not use a Retron. I think it'd be cool to use original hardware. Mm -hmm. But as you were saying, yeah, if we want to get this out to HDMI, on, into our modern video gear, onto it's the internet. really hard to do. probably the best way to show you the game. Plus, with original hardware, frankly, on the TVs we have to work with here, it's uh, pretty, uh, looks pretty crappy. Yeah. Uh, you need a CRT it's... to play those games correctly. Well, and, and you'd and... still, your option out of a Genesis, your best option test video. Yep. Or composite video, in which yep. case you're going to get a bunch of just nasty noise all over the video signal. However, I do appreciate the purity uh, of the of the good people who are making these recommendations. You're, you're, you know, we, we agree with you. Playing these things in their original form is, is probably the best way to do them. I'm also very happy with the fact that there are some folks that have given a lot of loving attention to good emulation. I, I think about uh, the good people at M2 who just seem to exist Absolutely. to provide us with uh, the closest to perfect experience we can. Surprisingly uh, topical today, actually. Surprisingly topical because... Today, they just announced that Streets of Rage 2 will be coming out in 3D, remastered in 3D on the Nintendo 3DS. Woohoo! As well as... As well as Gunstar Heroes and Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Yep, so that's uh, that's two really good games. And a third one. <laughs> that isn't so good, but two really good games and a Sonic game. So there we go. I, you know what? I'm being mean. Sonic 2 is not a bad game. No, it's Sonic 2 is a great game, honestly. No, 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 it's not. It's just a not a bad game. It's a great Sonic game. Uh, that's like saying the Phantom Menace is a great original trilogy movie. Uh, now, Sonic 2 is better than many Sonic games. Uh, Sonic CD, man, that's the one. I, I, Sonic 2 is fun if you got a buddy. Again, that's that's why I like Sonic 2 is when you're with a couple of people, um, which may not be a popular opinion. But, uh, Playing Sonic 2 split screen with Tails? Yeah, of course. Yeah, that's why you want to do it, man. Whew. Yeah. But I mean, the problem with... Okay, so I, I, I've griped about this before. The problem with Sonic games, they're beautiful. They have good music. Uh, very, the, the, you know, they have wonderful sense of speed. They're very clean and... But uh, unfortunately, they have these big exploratory levels with no incentives to explore them. 
uh, that that's really what frustrates me, even about the best Sonic games, with the possible exception of CD. Is that, so, uh, Jared, you're not going to be buying 3D Sonic 2, but no, you no, probably not. will be buying 3D But I'll be buying Rage just game. about every other video game ever. And, uh, yeah, so, yeah, here I am. I'll be definitely be buying the 3D Streets of Rage. Uh, I'll also uh, likely uh, be giving some, uh, giving some looks here to the uh, Gunstar Heroes, because, guys, if you haven't played that, uh, you That's missing an amazing out. game. Yeah, that I, was... That was the Genesis Contra, basically. Yeah, yeah I, I can get, like, if you're like, oh, I don't want to play this, this looks silly. Well, yeah, it is silly. It's just dumb walking and punching things. But uh, uh, Gunstar Heroes is just sublime. And takes significant skill yeah, as well. Yeah, uh, it really does. But you can get enough skill to be ridiculously good at it. And uh, with a knee in the head there. So, <laughs> all right, uh, Caleb. What, okay, how about this? Let's uh, let's, let's let this guy let's, wipe us. Let's all right. Let's let's take this guy out. Yeah, and call take it this a day. guy out. Because Jared, right. as we've been saying, these games are best of two players. Playing yeah. here with you today, I could keep playing all day long. Yeah, I'm really having a good time because yeah, I'm just sitting here hanging out, and when we turn off the mics, we're just sitting here screaming at this guy. There we go. Oh, I nice, kicked nice. you. I kicked him. We you win. Kicked, yeah, there's victory. You're down. The forces of goodness have won. You know, I, not that scores matter, but I would like to point out that Skate has 97,000, 105,000, 115,000 points to Blaze's 85,000. It's because you're better at video games than I am, Jerry. Obviously, that's what it all is. Right. Well, thank um, you for watching us and hanging with us. We're going to keep playing. And maybe we'll be back with more Speeds of Rage. But until then, keep it locked to IGN for all things 3D Streets of Rage, 3D Sega Classics, retro video games. Gary, get over here so I punch you in the head. And yeah, punching your friends in the head. All right, all right cool. Oh, you got me. Thank you. Bye bye.